So my name is Trad Hatton. I'm the country director uh, for PATH DRC and the director of the Central African Regional Hub. Um, I'm with my colleague Edna Harimenshi, who is the director of programs. So we will be doing this uh, this presentation together. Um, Sean, I don't. Do we do do we do broader introductions or are there too many? What? Should, how do you? No, there's far questions? too many. Just just far introduce your team. Uh, but colleagues, uh, please put your uh, name, who you're working with, uh, in the chat, uh, so that we uh, have an understanding of what audience you do. Very much appreciated. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah, please go ahead, Chad. Looks great. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so the title of our presentation today is Updates on DRC's Ongoing Digital Health Transformation and an Overview of the Current COVAX Digital Platform. So, the DR, next slide, please. Um, and this is just uh, the outline we'll go through. We want it's Im important that you know who we are and our role here in DRC to uh, to to understand uh, what you know a lot of the details, especially around uh, the COVAX intervention. So, for those who do not know PATH, um, PATH is an international NGO uh, that's based in uh, Seattle, Washington, um, but has operates in, in uh, over 70 countries, um, including uh, the DRC. So we are a global team of innovators uh, working to eliminate health inequities so that people, communities, and economies can thrive. That is our uh, mission. Um, again, just to, make, to, to give a better context of who we are, we are a global team of over 1,500 people um, working in 70 countries. Um, and we'll be talking specifically today about uh, DRC in Central Africa. So um, we have been operational here in DRC since 2010, uh, supporting uh, the DRC government to improve health outcomes. We have a staff of uh, 120 people distributed across around the country. Um, so we are a partner of both uh, the Ministry of Health, um, and also quite significantly is with the presidency. Um, and the presidency in this case, um, there's a new president that came, uh, was elected in DRC in 2019 with a reform agenda. And part of that reform agenda is introduction of universal health care. So the future and the work that PATH does is oriented towards the new universal healthcare system, which is under construction um, as we speak. Um, we are, uh, next slide, you can see the geographic dis, uh, um, distribution. For those who don't know the, the Democratic Republic of Congo, it is uh, a, it's a large country. So the, the map that you see on the right, if it was superimposed uh, over Western Europe, Okay, it's, it's the same size as Western Europe or as, as the United States um, east of the Mississippi. So the, the, the distances are very significant. It takes two and a half hours to fly across the country. And you actually cannot drive across the country. The roads aren't sufficient to, to do that. Um, next, next slide. <clears throat> this is just, again, to give you an overview of, of our programmatic areas of support. And I won't go in detail except to say that there are six areas that we've been working on over the last uh, 12 years, HIV and AIDS. PEPFAR, uh, malaria, digital health, that will be part of the discussion today, uh, epidemic preparedness and response, immunization, which will be the other part of our discussion today, and oxygen. And specifically, we'll be talking about those two boxes highlighted in, in blue, and those are both USAID-funded uh, projects, Digital Square, um, and Momentum, um, which is the acronym is MRIGHT. And so, yeah, next slide, please. Okay, so let's do a quick overview of Digital Square. Um, so for those who do not know Digital Square, um, it is a PATH-led initiative funded by USAID, uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and a consortium of other partners. And Digital Square's role is to create resources, advance technologies, and foster alignment uh, to improve how countries and the global health community design, use, and pay for digital health tools and approaches. 
How do we do this? We identify promising investments and provide operational support to streamline their procurement and to get started. We promote the development, adoption, and use of global goods, um, digital health global goods, and to help increase their availability, adaptability, and maturity. And we strengthen national, national level digital health expertise to enable uh, informed decision making and sustainable implementation. And that's what we're going to talk about today in the DRC. Why do we do this? Uh, to improve health. Ultimately, this is about health outcomes. We want health and well being, uh, help to achieve health equity and increasingly uh, equitable, equitable access to digital health uh, supported services. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, Sean mentioned a little bit about the, uh, the, the journey of digital transformation. And so that's what we've been supporting uh, in the DRC since 2018. So our approach goes through these six steps and we'll describe some of them to you. Um, the first step is to ensure digital health leadership and governance. The second step is to support country's digital strategy. The third is an investment roadmap. The fourth is to develop or define health enterprise architecture for a system. Fifth is identifying relevant digital tools. And sixth is to support systematic data use for decision making. So uh, aligned with number one, um, Digital Square Path supported the go government's creation of the first ever digital health agency of the DRC. It was a public service integrated into the Ministry of Health. Um, it has since the adoption of universal health care, it, it is changing its legal personality and now it is no longer a service of the, of the Ministry of Health. It's now uh, what we call a, an établissement public, a public establishment supporting universal health care. So that's the governance piece. Uh, the second piece is um, the strategy. So a strategy was developed in 2020 and it serves from 2020 to 24. That strategy is the basis for the third point, which is the costed investment roadmap. So we believe that it's not sufficient just to develop a strategy. We need to develop a practical investment roadmap, a roadmap to define activities over time and, and costed investments uh, to, to give government, donors, partners, you know, practical information about the costs so they can make uh, um, the most efficient and resource efficient decisions. Um, next slide, please. And we'll talk briefly about that roadmap. We think it's a model of process to, to be followed. Next slide. So uh, I said, I, as I mentioned, um, the, the costed investment roadmap, uh, developing that roadmap was a six month process. It was highly participatory. Uh, led by the government of the DRC and over 60 institutions of different kinds were involved in the development of, of this costed investment roadmap. So it's in some ways a consensus document of experts, of local partners, of government to, to identify where those investments are. And just very, uh, in, in summary, the, the, the decision was made to to, to, to prioritize these 17 investments. I won't go through each of them, but 17 investments to catalyze the digital health transformation in the DRC. So I'll just call attention to a couple of these investments. This first bucket of nine investments are at the national level. So these are national level institutions, norms and standards, uh, processes uh, from the national level. So the first investment, to give you an example, would be the development the, to operationalize the Digital Health Agency of, uh, of the Universal Health Care Council. So there are costs associated with, with doing that, and those are all detailed in, in the investment roadmap. Also, I'll call, I'll call attention to investment number four. So that is the, the development of the health enterprise architecture of the new universal health care system the digitized platform of the new, new UHC system. And that's an activity that will begin in the next couple of months. Um, and, and if there's ever any interest to know more about, you know, more details on any of these investments or how this process was undertaken, there are, there, there are detailed documents that, that dive very deep down 
into some of these investments. Um, next slide, please. I'm really going to now breeze over the next ones. Next slide. So this is objective two, and this is if objective one was national level, objective two is now the operational level, either at the province or down at what we call the health zone. It's often called the health district, and all the way down to the health facilities. So there are investments here in terms of interoperability, in terms of investments in uh, on connectivity, in equipment. Um, the, the country has over 20,000 health facilities. We will target roughly 3,400 of them in the first three years. Um, I'll draw attention also to the investment number 13. This is the development of DRC's carte sanitaire. A carte sanitaire is uh, what we might call a, a dynamic interactive map, in this case of the DRC, where a leader or a decision maker can glide his cursor along parts of the country's map and, and get the information he's looking for. It could be health in infrastructure, it could be outbreak data, it could be mortality data of the specific you know, subpopulation. So all that uh, interactive and dynamic for decision makers. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. And now I don't know if you heard me. Thank you so much. Objective three is human resources capacity. And this is where we work with the School of Public Health to integrate digital health curriculum into the existing MPH programs in three schools around the country. Um, we train, we actually train people, we'll pay for the training of the first cohort of 60 people, um, you know, to be trained in various aspects of, of digital health so they can be workers in the new system. And the 17th and the last investment is the country's first efforts in terms of telemedicine. Um, so put that plan together, those 17 investments together. It's a three-year plan, so roughly $36 million. And presently, the various donors are lining up to different investments. And we expect by next month uh, to have uh, donor coverage for each of these investments. Um, next slide, please. Next slide. I think it might be a little delay now. Okay, so I wanted to go through. Thank you, Edna. I wanted to go through that part very big, that, that sort of big picture. So it's understood what the DRC, the transformation the DRC is going through. Um, it's a well defined process um, through uh, the evolution through those steps and now the digital health uh, investment roadmap. Now, I think we wanted to talk now specifically on the work that. PATH supports with USAID funding or immunization COVID vaccine introduction. And for that, I'll hand it over to Edna. Edna, à vous. Thank you so much, Trad. Um, my, I'll have to apologize to the audience because my uh, connectivity today isn't so great. So I'll just um, do the presentation with my camera off and please let me know if the slides are not moving um, on your screen. Um, so the work that we want to share today, um, so I just moved to the next slide, is work that we did under uh, Momentum M Right. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Momentum Awards, it, it's a suit of um, awards that are funded by USAID uh, to holistically improve maternal, newborn, and child health services uh, in partner countries around the world. Uh, GSI is the actual prime of the award, and in the DRC, uh, PATH is actually the uh, operational lead. And uh, the Momentum m right, um is focused on essentially providing operational and, and technical support uh, for COVID-19 vaccine introduction, uh, to strengthen routine immunizations and, and provide technical assistance um, on, the, uh, on polio activities in the country. And so through uh, the work that they're doing or we're doing um, around COVID-19 vaccine introduction, uh, we um, are also uh, supporting the Ministry of Health to strengthen uh, COVID-19 data management. <clears throat> um, and um, so 
uh, essentially the country opted to use uh, DHS to COVID-19 tracker. Um, the, and I believe it's a platform that is also used in, in many other countries. So the, you might be familiar with the tool, uh, but in its current state in the DRC, uh, it still requires ongoing investment in terms of um, not just the tool itself, but also the skills, uh, but also change management. So what we try to do here is just provide uh, a quick overview of what are the different steps that are taken uh, to go from, you know, from the time a client receives their COVID-19 vaccine shot to actual data being reported uh, through the system. Uh, and you'll see, uh, so uh, there is an actual breakdown uh, in step two um, of <coughs> Instead of the data being uh, reported into DHS to tracker, uh, what's currently happening is that the data uh, actually gets transcribed into a register, a paper-based a paper register or a tally sheet, and that data manager uh, completes a daily summary and the aggregated data is either sent through three uh, through three options. Um, um, uh, the first option being a nurse or a supervisor taking the form directly to the health zone, which is uh, the next level up uh, the health pyramid, uh, or maybe by phone uh, or uh, WhatsApp uh, directly uh, to uh, to yeah to the health zone. Uh, and the reason being is that the uh, unfortunately the DHS to tracker has been implemented or rolled out, but it's not really being used for reasons that we will mention um, in, in the next slide. Um, so, but the ideal state obviously would be for that data to be entered uh, directly through DHS tracker um, at the at the site of uh, data collection, so at the at the health facility. And then, um, so what we what is currently happening? So we did an actual survey through MRIDE again, um, uh, and we found out that in Congo Central, which is a, a province that began uh, vaccinating, I think in um, in October uh, of last year. Um, only 40% of the, the patient files had been reported through the DHS to tracker. And actually, uh, my, my sense is that that's actually one of the largest uh, data reporting uh, numbers that we might have at the moment. Uh, but what we know is that there's been so far uh, accumulated records that have, haven't been reported through the DHS to tracker. And we actually think and estimate that only 20% of uh, the records have been reported uh, through DHS to Trekker. Uh, so it's 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 huge in terms of um, you know data incompleteness uh, um, and data quality as well. Um, there's so many challenges that we'll go through, but also opportunities. <clears throat> So amongst uh, some of the, please let me know if you've, um, if my slide has moved, um, but we tried to outline some of the, the challenges, but also opportunities that we see at this stage uh, when it comes to um, uh, the use of DHS to tracker for reporting uh, for COVID-19 vaccination data. So some of the challenges include obviously the lack of uh, or weak completeness of data, um, which you know it makes sense if um, not all the site levels are able to use the DHS to tracker. Uh, but we also, you know, the, the reason for that is obviously because there are insufficient number of tablets. Um, so um, the, the, the country wasn't able to um, um, to, to provide uh, enough tablets for for all uh, sites that had begun vaccinating, um, which you know makes it difficult to 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 in, um, to directly input data into into the tracker. Uh, but you know uh, the, the, there are also other more uh, motivation based factors uh, that come into play, including the low motivation of personnel. So I don't know if you're familiar with the. With, with the ERC, but we had a huge strike uh, last year because some of the health workers had not been paid uh, for the first um, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, work that they had uh, uh, that they had done in the country. So uh, pretty much um, the, for, for six months into 2021, they're, they're, we were dealing with massive strikes of healthcare uh, personnel. So that really caused uh, additional challenges. Um, but we, we also know that you know, they're not getting any, there are no feedback loops essentially on the quality of immunization data at all levels and uh, a general lack of uh, cultural uh, culture for data uh, use and analysis. Um, but notwithstanding all these challenges, we're working with, uh, again, 
um, the uh, USAID um, through Digital Square and um, MWrite um, to sort of find uh, solutions around, you know, how can we improve not just data management, but also data use uh, for COVID-19 vaccination data. So with MWrite, we're looking into potentially developing um, some innovations and, and cost effective solutions for ongoing mentoring and supportive supervision at site level. Uh, really to sit down with healthcare workers and uh, go through, you know, some of the data that they need to uh, to record and 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 really help them uh, help them or help to help train health workers around data recording and management uh, from paper form to the DHS to tracker. Um, we're also looking at how we can um, just like work directly with their supervisors or health zones uh, and provinces uh, uh, around again data management and reporting. Um, and then through Digital Square, uh, we're potentially supporting the development of a, of a dashboard uh, that would come and um, well drive programmatic decision decision making. So taking all that data that's coming from site level, converting it into easy to interpret and easy to use. Um, uh, well, data uh, points uh, that they could then use at the national level to drive uh, programmatic decision making, uh, but really instill a sense and a culture of, of uh, regular data use uh, and analysis to hopefully improve um, uh, routine data um, and well use of, uh, of of the DHS to tracker um, and, and data overall to guide uh, decision making in the country. So I'll, I'll, I think those were just the two slides that we had on this. Uh, we'll stop there and, and see if there are any questions from the group. Over.